Hello and welcome to a new episode of EU Deal after Brexit. Today I have the pleasure to receive the expert Camille Manisali. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. So we will talk about a sensitive topic. Yeah. The fight of the UK against human trafficking post-Brexit. Sensitive subject, but really a huge topic. And interesting. And interesting, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> so tell me, what does human trafficking mean? Um, it's commonly thought that uh, slavery has been eradicated, but human trafficking is a deep reality that affects a uh, high number of countries. Pursuant to Palermo Port Protocol uh, in its Article 3, uh, Palermo Protocol, which is the first legal binding instrument with an agreed definition of human trafficking, define human trafficking as an act of moving individuals internally, regionally, or globally by means uh, such as force, fraud, coercition, uh, violence, with this purpose to exploit them. And there are different forms of exploitation. The um, domestic habitudes, criminal exploitation, sexual exploitation, forced labor, so yeah. In the EU we have a migration crisis, so do you, what is the difference between human trafficking and the smuggling of, of uh, migrants? Thank you for asking me this question because there are often a confusion between both and their difference as um, the migrants consent to be smuggled while the human trafficking victims are obliged to give up everything to be exploited. And moreover, um, when the victim of human trafficking crosses the borders, the human trafficking crime will start. So. There are differences. Okay, I understand. But um, are there any obligation on the EU member states to fight human trafficking? Yes, it's a priority for many countries to fight such transnational crime, um, especially in the European Union. The European Union has developed a legal arsenal uh, to settle obligations for the member states to protect the victims, to prosecute such crime, and I'm thinking, for example, to the Directive 2011-36 EU. So, what is the impact of human trafficking on, in the UK? The UK is one of the, of the most country, of the most affected country in this world. Um, to implement all this legal arsenal, the UK uh, developed, uh, implemented all these instruments by developing uh, its piece of legislation, the Modern Slavery Act 2015. And as a matter of fact, um, the year ending March 2019, there were more than 5,000 trafficking um, offenses recorded by the police. Okay. So it's uh, more than 51% uh, uh, from the previous year. So it's really important, and especially at the pandemic time, because uh, with the pandemic time, economical, uh, there is um, an economical and a social, uh, economical uh, worsened situation, and uh, there are the, the roots of the human trafficking, so that the poverty increases the, the human trafficking. So it's really critic. And do you consider that the modern, modern slavery act is really sufficient to tackle the human trafficking in the UK? Well, the modern slavery doesn't um, provide a harmonized protection for the victims across the UK. There are internal discrepancies and the EU law appears as a remedy to such internal discrepancies. Unlike legislation in Scotland, Northern uh, Ireland, uh, there is no obligation for the states to provide assistance to the victims. Uh, it emerged from legislation um, in Wales, England, that the potential uh, victims cannot claim uh, their right based on the Modern Slavery Act and must rely on the EU uh, legislation. So a scenario of a no deal would have um, negative consequences for the UK because the UK would have been in the emergency to strengthen its domestic legislation in a record time. So on the 30th December, the UK signed the Trade and Cooperation Agreement. Mm -hmm. And so, as you said, the impact, if there was no deal, would have been really negative, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. 
So following the TCA provisions, does the UK still have an entire possibility to access such indispensable tools for fighting human trafficking? Well, um, the human trafficking is a transnational crime which requires uh, international cooperation, coordination uh, between the member states. And um, the European Union has adopted a view enhancing collaboration and coordination through tools, institutions. Uh, you have Europol, the joint investigation teams, uh, under which Eurojust helps the coordination of investigation and prosecution conducted in parallel uh, across several states. You have the European arrest warrants, the simplified cross-border judicial surrender procedure. So it was important for the UK to not lose uh, a total access to such tools and institutions. Well, I'm interested about this surrender. What is the difference with the European arrest warrant? Um, the first one which comes to my mind is the fact that the UK can refuse to execute an errand, a warrant uh, because political offences. But yes, there are differences, but fortunately, uh, thanks to this uh, surrender arrangement, which replaced the, the European arrest warrants, the UK will be able to fight against human trafficking because without such mechanism, the UK will not be able to uh, ensure security actions. And fortunately, the TCA uh, provides a continued operational cooperation for the, for the UK because the UK will be able to, um, to ensure uh, its cooperation with the Europol, you're just as a third country. So the UK will be able to participate in the meetings as a third country, so no voting rights, no states anymore. Um, however, something is quite mm, not good for the UK, is the fact that the e UK law enforcement agencies will not anymore um, ensure a guaranteed, a full guaranteed access to the EU crucial database. So they will lose time needed to fight such crime because you have to transfer fast and <laughs> there will be a little bit like, mm, okay. Mm, can I ask you a complex question? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm you, ready. <laughs> you mentioned before that EU law served as a remedy mm -hmm. to complete the UK legislation aiming at ensuring a protection. So my question is, does the UK still benefit from the EU law standards? I have to answer to your complex question. <laughs> tell me. I tell you. Um, there is a concept, the retain law, that you can find in the EU Withdrawal Act 2020. So uh, it is composed, the retain law, uh, of the EU legislation already implemented in the, in the UK system. So through this uh, EU return law, the, the UK will be able to benefit, to still benefit from the spectrum of EU law. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so Did I answer correctly to this complex question? I hope so. <laughs> I leave the viewers respond. <laughs> yeah. So you previously mentioned that the impact of the pandemic on human trafficking will be important. And I would like to know which, who, are the person most vulnerable to be enrolled into human trafficking? Yeah, uh, being in a precarious economic situation, the workers are vulnerable. Um, because most of the workers' rights they are from domestic uh, implementation of EU directive. So um, it was quite dangerous to lose the ELO influence for the workers' rights. And uh, this TCA provides what is called the uh, level playing field, uh, which refers to a common set of rules standards to prevent any um, unfair competition um, and to not lowering workers' rights. So thanks to that and to the non-regression clause, mm -hmm. they will keep uh, a protection. Okay, and I would like to end this episode with a positive question, an optimistic, I hope, question. <laughs> so. Do you think that the future of the fight in the UK against human trafficking is rather positive or not? 
I'm not a medium. <laughs> but, You're sure? Yeah, but <laughs> no. Um, what can I tell you is that the TCA, um, we, are, we, are waiting, we are still waiting for the entire approval of the TCA. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, um, the, the TCA is not stable, it's not fixed. Things are going on, so we cannot say yes, not. Uh, but the, um, the fact that there is this TCA, um, it's really positive because it shows that, um, that there was this will to keep a close relationship between the UK and the EU and um, to, to have a coordination policies. And these are both two important uh, ingredients to fight such transnational crime. Okay, thank you very much for this interesting topic. Thank you for your invitation. <laughs> You're welcome. So, thanks to you viewers for assisting to this TV show and I would like to re remind you that we have other videos that you can find on the Facebook webpage or on the YouTube channel Media Lab. Thank you very much. <laughs>